All right, welcome back. Hello, everybody. I'm Jill with Go English Coach. Today we have our final class for Intermediate Grammar One. We have gone through, um, this will be our eighth class. So each of our classes has um, eight, each of our courses has eight classes or eight lessons. Um, and we do that throughout the, there we go, sorry. Yeah, um, we run those classes through the month. So in June, we will be starting, actually June 1st, I believe, you'd have to check the calendar. Uh, June 1st, we'll be starting Intermediate Grammar 2. So the best part about live classes, you guys, is that if you aren't able to attend the live class, which many people are not, um, then you can always watch the class in the replays, which is where all of you are probably doing that right now. So I'm very glad you're here. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here for you. Um, you know, being committed to learning something new and starting a new journey with English, uh, you know, recognizing that you want to change something, you want to improve something is, is actually a really big step. So please congratulate yourself on taking a first step. It's not always easy. A, it's not easy to admit when you aren't as good as you'd like to be at something. And then two, you know, finding a program that works for you and your schedule and your style and your interests um, is also very difficult. So I'm glad you're all here and let's get started for today. So we have been studying the past tense, simple past tense um, in our intermediate grammar course. In our advanced grammar course, we started looking at simple past and comparing it to the past progressive. So for example, I walked to work this morning is simple past and I was walking to work this morning. Okay, so let's just write those out so we all have a nice little kind of framework for what we're talking about here. I walked, so I walked to work every day. That's like our present tense sentence, okay? I walked to work yesterday, okay? So notice that we had to change part of this sentence to make this work, to make it grammatically correct, because we've got walked, that's in the past tense, so we have to change it. We can't say, I walked to work every day. Well, you can, but then you're talking, it's a whole different sentence. Um, I, okay, I was walking to work. Now, usually when you have this past progressive, you have another um, piece of information connected to it. So you can say, I was walking to work when something happened, or I was um, if it's something, so this, this one, remember, so if we make our little graph of now, and this is the past, right? And this is the future. Um, we've got a past, a simple past, right? This one is simple past. It happened one time. Simple past happens just one time, and then it's done. It's not happening anymore in most cases, right? And then this um, present, so we've got simple past here, and then we've got present progressive. So present progressive is used when we discuss something that started in the past and that ended in the past, but it happened for a period of time. And it doesn't matter how much time. You can say, I was walking for three minutes yesterday when I found $50 on the ground. Okay, I was walking when I found $50 on the ground. Or you can flip those two. Let's just write that sentence out. We can kind of start to look at some examples here. I was walking when I found $50. Okay, I was walking when I found $50. So we've got this part here, which is past progressive, and then I found is simple past. 
So something was happening. I was walking, right? So let's do that one again. I was walking. It was like this. And I found. This is found. So it happened one time while I was walking. Now, you can also switch the order of these. So you can say, I found $50 while I was walking, okay? So when always goes before the simple present section and while comes before present progressive because while indicates that something happened for a period of time. When discusses more uh, of one point in time. Okay, so when equals one point in time and while is best when we're talking about a period of time, okay? So from point one to point two, okay? Um, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that in just a minute. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just do our unit two review for now. So we're gonna hop over to the computer here. And this was, um, this unit two review was something I gave you in our last class and I wanted you to do it on your own. So if you have not done that, um, I do think it's really important to, um, to work on your own. I do think it's really important for you to take the initiative to um, complete these assignments on your own. So let's just, I'll give this to you again. So if you haven't done it, please just stop the video, go back and then just take a piece of paper and write your answers on that paper, okay? So let's do that. Come on over here. So I'd love to get through this today since this is the last in our class. And I really want to get the present progressive started for you guys today so we can move into the second class and have everything kind of line up for us. So here is the review. I can get the whole thing here. Ugh. Okay. Let's just do it section by section. So if you have not done this, Pause it right now and do this first section. So the answers you're looking for are given to you, A, B, or C. So you're choosing either the present, the past, or the past participle, okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and do this. Last night, I blank a poem for my English class. So we know for sure that it's in the past tense because it says last night, right? That's our big clue. All right, so which one in that list, A, B, or C, is a past tense form of the verb to write? Okay, so write, wrote, written. It's this one. Last night I wrote a poem for my English class. It's blank about my childhood. It, okay, it was about my childhood. At first, I didn't blank what to write. So we know this is past tense here because didn't is the past tense. So when we have the past tense with the do auxiliary, we just need this one. I didn't know what to write about. Okay, we never really use knowing. And this is, if we have didn't, we don't use this, okay? Because in the past tense, when we say the negative, we just use did, didn't or doesn't, didn't, no, didn't, because that's past tense. And then we use the regular base form of the verb that isn't conjugated into the past tense, okay? Okay, my roommate blank, a good su suggestion. My roommate makes a good suggestion. Did make or made? My roommate made a good suggestion. Okay. Um, did you blank a poem for your class? Did you write? Okay. I really enjoy the experience, enjoys the experience. I really enjoyed. Okay. Perfect. All right. Let's do part B here. Um, so if you want to take a minute and do this on your own, please do. All right. <clears throat> I... 
excuse me. <clears throat> I blank, Paul is the word in parentheses here, you last night, but you not answer. Okay. I called you last night. We, this is our indicator here. Okay. Take my pressure sharper pencil. That'll be easier to write with. I called you last night, but you not answer. We're going to say didn't answer. Okay. Blank, you go out. Did you go out? Right. Okay. Um, let's see. So you can say, yes, I did or no, I didn't. But here then it says, I blanked to the movies. I went. So the answer is yes or no. They, this person did go out. Yes, I did. I went to the movies. Okay. What blank you blank with the word see? What did you see? Okay, I saw Dead Poet Society. I didn't like it very much, though. Okay? All right, great work. Let's do this here. So here there are six mistakes and we need to circle them and correct them. Six mistakes. Let's read this together. So feel free to just repeat after me and then let's stop when we notice that there's a mistake, okay? So the poet Elizabeth Alexander was born in New York City, but she didn't grew up there. So if we have didn't, we don't need this to be in the past tense. We don't need past tense and past tense. So we're going to circle this and we're going to change it to grow. Her father taked a job with the government. Taked is not how we say the past tense. We say it. It's irregular. So we say took. Um, her father took a job with the government. And her family moved to Washington, D.C. All of that seems correct. Okay, so we've got two of them right now. As a child, she have a loving family. So as a child, we're talking about something. In the past, she had a loving family. So now we've got three. Her parents were active in the civil rights movement, and Alexander Gotts, What's the past tense of got or to get is got interested in African-American history. In her first book, she wrote about important African leaders. She met Barack Obama. Oh, let's see. So we've got four. We need two more. She met Barack Obama at the University of Chicago. They both teached. We don't say teach. The past tense is taught. There in the 1990s. Um, on January 20th, 2009, she reads a poem at President Obama's inauguration. So she, that needs to be present, or excuse me, past tense. She read a poem at President Obama's inauguration. All right. Hopefully you've got most of those correct. If you need more support with the past tense before we jump into past progressive, please watch the last few videos. If you'd like more um, advanced kind of support, stick around for the next class after this one and watch, and watch the advanced grammar class. Um, okay. Yeah, so those are the things that we are doing now to just make sure that um, you guys are progressing in a, in a logical kind of way, I guess. Um, okay, let's go back to the board and we're going to look at, so there's that. If you guys want to take another look, pop, part B and C there for you. Okay. Um, great. Okay, let's jump up here and we're going to just kind of elaborate on this. So, We've talked a little bit about when to use the past progressive, but just let's, let's, we're going to talk about when we use past progressive 
and how we form it. How and when, how and when. Okay, so we're gonna say past progressive. Okay, so something that started in the past, we're gonna put our little chart here. This is present or now and past here, something that started here and continued, right? So this is different from something like when I was young, I used to, something I did in the past tense that I don't do anymore. This is different, okay? Past progressive is almost like you're telling a story, but it started, um, we're discussing about how something started and stuck. So um, let's see. So we form this, we have a subject, then we have the form of to be in the past. We're here past. So we're, what are the past tenses of to be? What are the past tenses of to be? Oh, let's do this. Okay, so we've got two different ways we can say the past. We can say was or were. And then um, we've got your main verb plus ing, okay? And this part is kind of all together. I believe you guys should know all of this because I'm sure many of you have studied this already. So subject, verb, and main verb. So there's two verbs. There's kind of a supporting verb and um, the main verb, okay? So if we've got some sentences here, we can say, I was traveling, um, last week. Okay. Um, they, let's do, let's do a different kind of subject versus just pronouns. So we can say my friends were, um, driving when they had an accident. Okay, let's see. Let's do one more here. Um, the dog was running. And there we go. Okay, so we've got a couple different sentences. So let's just kind of plug it in here. We've got these are the subjects, right? Subject, subject, subject. We've got the form of to be. Let's put that in the same color so we all are completely understanding what's going on here. Okay, so the same color as up here. We've got boom, 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 were driving and was running, okay? Oh, sorry, we've got too much going on here. So we've got in the blue, we've got the was, were, okay? Let's just clean this up so everybody can see what we're doing here. I like color coding things. Just makes things easier to understand. Blue is the was or were, okay? I'll get out of your way here in just a second so everybody can see what's going on. Was, okay, and then we've got this other part here that will just indicate just like that. Okay. Okay, so what are some of the things we notice here? What are some things that we notice? Okay, so some of the things that I notice here um, are some of the things that we discussed when we looked at present progressive, okay? And some of that is, uh, let's see, some of the rules that go with how we make the ING form. So remember this, you guys, to make the ING form, this is a continuous 
continuous, or we also call it progressive. So some teachers might call this present or past continuous or past progressive. Those are the same thing, okay? So when we make the ing form, we simply take the verb travel and we add ing, right? Simple. So travel to traveling. However, in some cases, if you notice here and here, we've got some exceptions. So what are some of the exceptions? One exception is, let's call it an exception. So a, an exception is something that does not follow the rules, right? Um, so one exception to this rule is that you have the verb plus ing. That's the rule, okay? Boom. One exception is when you have a CVC. So the verb here is run, consonant, vowel, consonant. When you have this structure of a, of a word, we double that final syllable, okay? So um, the exception is when you have CVC, Consonant, vowel, consonant, we will double the final consonant. Okay, so run, for example, here's our example. Run goes to running. Okay, that's just one example. And there are, there are some exceptions to this exception, to be honest. But let's not get into that because then we'll just drive ourselves crazy. Um, the other exception, so this is one of them. The other exception to this rule where we simply add ing to the verb is that when we have a word that ends with, so the verb here is drive, right? Drive, D-R-I-V-E. Um, when we have one that has the silent E, we just drop the E and we add ING, okay? So let me get done here. Um, when the verb ends in silent E, we drop it and add ING, okay? can still see that. Okay, good. I just had to get down before. Okay, so those are just two of the things I noticed from these sentences here. Okay, anything else that comes up for us here for you guys? Okay, perfect. So, okay, so we've got just these three sample sentences. Let's go through a couple of more things. Let's go on here. Um, so, let's talk about how we make past progressive sentences that are negative. Okay, so we now we know how to do the positive. I was traveling last week. Okay, let's go back to that. I was traveling last, oops, last week. Okay, to make this net negative, it's very simple. The, the verbs don't, don't change at all. There's no, um, there's no do auxiliary. It's nothing confusing. It's easy. So we're just simply going to add not here. Okay, I was not traveling last week. Okay, so let's just make this different color so it kind of stands out. Okay, I was not traveling last week. I also, we can do what here? What can we do here, you guys? Yes, we can use a contraction. And most people use contractions here. I wasn't, wasn't. I wasn't traveling last week. So, um, so the pronunciation of wasn't, we have to always practice these contractions. I wasn't traveling last week, okay? So the pronunciation, if you guys have not been coming to my pronunciation fluency class, you really should. 
Um, and the reason is, is that so many people really get stuck on pronunciation because they've been studying for such a long time, but then they're like, ah, I can't use it. Um, and I've told you guys tons of stories uh, about students that I've had, or I mean, even in my own experience studying Spanish, it's like the pronunciation part of it has always just been like, oh, did I say that right? It makes me feel so embarrassed. So really practicing that. And so that's why I kind of like to infuse it into these lessons and also isolate it in another separate class because it's worth it. Okay. So the pronunciation, we always do like this with the lines. So we've got what? That is your pronunciation. You've got the z sound here. Wasn't. 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 Okay. So practice that. Um, let's look at how we form a question. Okay, so question. How do we form a question using the past progressive? We're going to simply take, we're going to switch these two. Okay, <laughs> so I was traveling. I'm going to just answer like somebody's asking the question. Oops. Were you traveling last week okay so you're going to use was or were this is the formula you know i like formulas was or were plus the subject plus the main let's just call that mv mv is the main verb so in this case what is our main verb travel okay the main verb travel plus ing and then this kind of if you're like a math person this is kind of right up your alley <laughs> I, i'm i'm a person that thinks in formulas i don't know why um okay so does that all make sense to everybody i was traveling last week last week i was not traveling i wasn't traveling last week were you traveling last week and then your answer for this can be Yes, I was, or no, I wasn't. Okay, so yes, I was, or no, I wasn't. Or you can simply just say yes or no. Yeah, I was traveling. Okay, let me take a look at my notes here. For those of you who don't know, this is the book I like to use, Focus on Grammar. Um, I highly recommend it. And um, yeah, I, I think it's a great... It's a great book. I like how they lay things out. It's it's it, it builds on each other nicely. So I, I don't get paid from that company. So I'm not promoting a book that I have financial interest in. So um great. Okay, what so now what I'd like to do is um let's sit here at the desk and I'd like to go through a couple of different exercises. So we'll look at when we use those two, right? So Often what happens is when we're talking about I was traveling last week and then something happened, okay? Traveling, so it happened from here to here and I, let's see, I got sick, okay? So you can have something, you can have in the same sentence, um, I was traveling last week, okay? when I got sick, okay? So when, so this is what's going on here. Oh gosh, this is, this is the past progressive. This is past progressive. And we have in the same sentence, we've got simple past, okay? So something was happening here from here to here and in the middle, right? I got sick, okay? And this is a completely fine sentence. We can also move that. So we've talked in this class about how English is often not very flexible when it comes to the order of our sentences. In this case, we can be flexible. So you can have, so if this is a, we've got kind of two clauses, we can say. So this is clause one. A clause is like a part of a sentence that is not complete. 
And this is clause two, okay, clause two. You can switch those clauses. So you can also say, I got sick while I was traveling last week. What did you hear differently when I said that? I got sick while I was traveling last week. I changed when to while, okay? So while, and I just said this a little bit earlier, so if you missed it, go back. So while can be used before the, uh, the progressive, okay? And when we use before simple past, okay? So if you wanna switch the order, you can do that. We're gonna say, um, I got sick while I was traveling. Okay, sorry, it's getting hard to write over there. <laughs> Does that make sense? I got sick while I was traveling. So while precedes present progressive and when we use before simple past, okay? Past progressive, I didn't mean to say present progressive there. Okay, so that's just kind of the general grammar presentation overview. Let's go over here and do a little bit of practice. All righty, so let's take a look. This is an activity, it's called Discover the Grammar from that book, okay? And what we're doing here is it says to read each question and then choose the correct sentence A or B in one item. Both answers are correct. So what they're saying here is, so in which sentence did the passengers arrive before the ship left? Here are your two sentences. So the sentences are correct in, this, in the sense that when the passengers arrived, the ship was leaving. The passengers arrived, the ship was leaving. When the passengers arrived, the ship left. Okay. So in which sentence did the passengers arrive before the ship left? So when the passengers arrived, the ship left. So the answer is B. These, this is kind of tricky, to be honest. You really have to get into the nuances of these sentences. Okay, so let's look at the two sentences first, and then we're going to go back and answer the question. So the first one says, it was sailing to New York. Okay, it sailed to New York. Which sentence tells us that the ship reached New York? So this one. It sailed means the action is complete right here. The action is complete. That's this right? That's that demonstration there. It was sailing indicates they're still in the water, right? They're still float sailing from one place to the next. So it does not, it's not complete. Okay. Okay. A couple more here. All right. Let's read the sentences. I think it's easier when we start there. It was sinking. It sank. In which sentence do we know that the ship went completely underwater? Which one means the action is done? Yep, it sank. Action is done or complete. Okay. In number four, in which sentence did the man fall asleep? Oh, let's read the sentences first. I don't like doing this part first. Okay, now A, he fell asleep while he was watching Titanic. While he was watching Titanic, he fell asleep. In which sentence did the man fall asleep? He fell asleep while watching, while he was watching Titanic. While he was, what do you guys think? He fell asleep while watching Titanic. Does that mean he fell asleep during the movie? Yes. While he was watching Titanic, he fell asleep. These two sentences are the same meaning. So actually, both of them are correct. Both of them mean he was watching and he fell asleep. Okay? In both of those. All right. Um, let's see, uh, let's go 5A and 5B. While the ship was sinking, 
passengers were getting into lifeboats. When the ship sank, passengers got into lifeboats. Okay, so which sentence talks about two actions that happened at the same time? So what we want to find is the sentence that did this. We did this to here and this to here. Maybe a little bit longer or, you know, this could be, they don't have to start and end at the same time, but they have happened. They have to overlap a little bit. It could be here. It could be here. Okay. It could be here, but essentially this line, the boat is sinking. Okay. And this bottom one, what happened? Okay. So which sentence talks about two actions that were in progress at the same time while the ships were sinking, they were getting into, getting into, so The verb here is to get into, okay? Um, so they were doing those things at the same time. Which sentence tells us that? Yeah, so it's this one. While the ship was sinking, they were getting into. So you can tell that it's two like this, okay? This one says simple past and simple past. So two things did not happen at the same time. We don't know. This, this sentence... What is the timeline of this sentence? If we say when the ship sank, passengers got into lifeboats, that means the boat sank and then they got into lifeboats. So the boat sank first and then they got into lifeboats, okay? Okay, number, let's see, A. So when he heard the news, he called me. When he heard the news, he was calling me. In which sentence was the phone call interrupted? So. That would be this one. So what happened here in number six is that um, he was calling. And he heard the news. So this calling got interrupted. So that's B. Okay. All right. Let's look at A and B in number seven. When he called her, she left the house. When he called her, she was leaving the house. In which sentence did the woman leave after the phone call? So in this one, we've got, he called her and then she left, okay? One happened first and then the next happened. Um, so that would be A, okay? Awesome, good work, you guys. I am going to give this to you for homework here. So what you're going to do, you've got an itinerary here. Um, or a schedule. So it says 10 o'clock a.m. breakfast, exercise, swimming, lunch, lecture, coffee, haircut, dinner, card game. Douglas is sailing to Europe on the SS Atlantic. Look at his schedule for yesterday. Complete the sentences. Use the past progressive form of the verbs in parentheses. Choose between affirmative and negative. So you're going to use this information here to complete this. And I think that it just goes... Oh, there's some more there. Okay, so let's do these first four together and then I'm gonna leave you guys with the rest of it, okay? So, at 10.15, Douglas wasn't sleeping in his cabin. He was having breakfast at Sea Breezes with Donna, okay? At 11.05, he Exercise in the gyms with Michael, in the ship's gym with Michael. So he was exercising. Okay, great. He wasn't swimming. Okay, swimming. So swimming is going to have a double M. Like we discussed, it's got that CVC. It's a one syllable word, swim, run, get. Okay, those are all one syllable words. And when you have a one syllable word with the CVC, okay, it goes, we double, it goes to CVCC and then ING, right? That's a plus. Okay, so swim goes to swimming, okay? 
At 110, he blank drink coffee at Cafe Rosé. Nope, coffee's at four. He wasn't drinking coffee at Cafe Rosé. He was. So each one is going to have a positive and a negative. He was eating lunch at Oceana with Raul. Okay. All right. Um, at 2.40, he, let's see, 2.40, so that's, he's in that lecture, he wasn't looking for a book in the ship's library. He was listening to a lecture on Italian art, okay? Okay. All right, good work on that. So what I'm going to give you guys is the rest of it. Let me just make this easy for you to do. Okay, let's see. There's the rest of it. So you've got the schedule there. Your schedule is here. And you've got these five, six, five, six, and seven to complete on your own. All right, you guys can do it, I know it. Okay, everybody, um, if you'd like, go ahead and stick around. We'll be starting the advanced pronunciation, excuse me, advanced grammar class here very shortly. And then tomorrow in Friday's class, I will be doing a quick pronunciation lesson in the morning, and that will be our lesson seven for pronunciation and fluency one. Okay, have a wonderful day, you guys, and I will see you very soon.